Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, I do some CNC work. Not too long ago, I was contacted to make a sign for a campsite. It would be a two-part sign where the top part contains the people's names and some sort of uh, outdoorsy graphic, and the bottom part is going to contain the site number. The uh, sign is going to be exposed to the elements, so anything done with a laser is eventually going to fade away because of the UV rays. So to give it a little bit more permanence, it was a perfect job for the Snapmaker CNC. This video is going to show you the steps that I took in creating this sign. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be an all-exclusive uh, how-to, but as I discover things, I'm going to be posting new videos. Uh, but for now, let's get started with this. So this is the image that I was given. It's a nice outdoorsy image with a campfire at the front, tent in the middle and trees behind the scenes. But before we process the image, we need to know what does the snapmaker need in order to make a CNC engraving. Moving over to our snapmaker software, we can see that there is basically two modes of CNC processing. One of them is the relief and the other one is the vector. The relief or the 3D is what creates a 3D effect on your workpiece, whereas the vector is a single depth cut either on the outline or the outline and everything in between. The relief is based on grayscale, where the lighter colors are at the top, darker colors are at the bottom, and everything else is in between. It automatically adjusts based on the depth of cut that you set in the software. So, for example, if your depth of cut is 10 millimeters, your 50% grayscale will be at 5 millimeters. If you adjust that to, let's say, 6 millimeter depth of cut, your 50% grayscale would be at 3 millimeters. Of course, the uh, deeper the cut, the more pronounced the features are. Grayscale is defined when your red, green, and blue channels of your uh, object's color are set at the exact same values. The scale is from 0 to 255, so that is 256 possible combinations, which is a lot more than your 50 shades of gray. The challenge now is taking this image and converting it into its grayscale companion, preserving the depth perception. So that means fire should be at the front, tent in the middle, and trees behind the scenes. For any type of CNC or laser engraving, it is best to use the so-called scaled vector graphic or SVG files for two reasons. Number one, regardless of how much you resize your scaled vector graphic, it will retain its nice clean lines. Whereas if you are resizing the original image, you're going to see the jagged edges becoming more and more pronounced. The second reason is that the scaled vector graphics are basically a path file, so you can create a path out of your graphic. And that's going to be very easy to create the so-called G-code that is going to be used by the CNC or the laser engraver to trace a path on your workpiece. I'm not saying you cannot use a JPEG or GIF or PNG, but you're going to have a lot less trouble with a scaled vector graphic. So the answer to the question is whatever software you're comfortable with that can give you a scaled vector graphic, use that one. I am using Inkscape. As a tip in creating your scaled vector graphic, make sure that every component and every uh, particular grayscale is in its own layer and appropriately labeled. For example, right here, I have the layer called tree 13, which corresponds to the very back tree where I set the grayscale to 13, 13, and 13. Similarly, the open flap of the tent, where the grayscale is 204, I've named the layer as tent 204. That way, it's easier to keep track of things, and we're going to be using that at the very end once we have created our relief carving first. As a second tip, when creating your vector graphic, make sure that the document size is exactly the same as your final graphic. That way you know where your origin is and where the actual graphic begins and when to expect the uh, carving to begin. Uh, look at your bit. It's basically 
the difference between where the bit is and where the collet is minus a millimeter so that way everything kind of moves uh, smoothly and it's not going to catch anything. I personally prefer to work in the positive quadrant um, so my origin is always going to be the bottom left and let's just play with the size I'm going to make it 12 centimeters uh, wide and if we are looking at the exact uh, origin I need to move it 60 and 44 and a fourth uh, millimeters so that way my origin right here is the bottom left and then the CNC is going to begin from there we click the process button and of course that gives you the various options uh, before I proceed I have selected uh, the vector uh, type of uh, CNC carving and that's why you see that only the outlines are selected but if I select relief and click process I am getting a whole different look and these are my various options for it uh, I'm going to be using the V carving bit my target depth would be three millimeters uh, of course like I said earlier with deeper the cut the more um, I should say contrast or the more pronounced the uh, different grayscale layers would be uh, step down that is how uh, in with each pass how deeper it goes uh, density I change it to 10 I mean it's always recalculating it so I set it to a maximum density everything else is remaining default here I am at the snap maker I have already calibrated where the bit is supposed to be and now it's time for me to set the work origin as I mentioned earlier I like to work in the positive quadrant so my origin will be somewhere near where the X is so we're just gonna move the bit around there it doesn't have to be on the exact same spot you also have to make sure that nothing is going to obstruct the movement of the uh, the head we set the work origin and we always run a boundary just to make sure that nothing is going to be obstructed and we click on the uh, start button
And this is our relief carving. Uh, we can definitely see the depth perception is preserved. We have the fire pit at the front, the tent in the middle, and the trees at the back. I am not exactly happy with the fire, so I'm gonna have to do some tweaks and send it for approval. But for the purposes of this demonstration, this is perfect. If you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe and also follow me on all social media channels. Uh, don't forget to hit the bell to get notified of my next upload. But don't go away yet. I have two bonuses. Hashtag bonus number one. I'm sure some of you are already wondering how to calculate the depth of cut of each individual grayscale color. And I have found a formula that works for me. I'm sure you might find your own formula, but this is something that is working for me and I'm going to demonstrate it right now. The formula that I found is this, uh, 255 minus the RGB number, which is our uh, grayscale number right here. And because all of them are the same, we just need to pick one number. We divide the difference by 255 and multiply that by the depth of cut. So in essence, we are taking the uh, percentage of the grayscale from the overall color variations that we have, which is the 250, 0 to 255. 
Uh, the reason for this math is this. Your zeros are your darker colors and they're going to be at the bottom. And the 255s are your light colors and they'll be at the top. So we need to find that scale in between where it's going to land. We're going to use this example and launch the calculator. So 255 minus uh, 115, which is our grayscale number divided by 255 and multiplied it by the three millimeters of the depth of cut that we set. So we're supposed to be roughly at 1.65 millimeters. <laughs> Taking my trusted calipers, let's measure. And for the moment of truth, the caliper reading is 1.58 which is slightly under what we're supposed to be. But then again, we're talking about a fraction of a millimeter. So really, it's not a big difference. Uh, we're going to do a second example with this very tree back here, which is the darkest tree. So that's going to be the furthest away from the, from the view, according to the grayscale. So 255 minus 13 divided by 255 times the uh, 3, the depth of cut. So we're supposed to be at 2.85 millimeters. Again, trusted caliper, measuring. And the caliper reading is 2.82, which is again slightly under, but still a fraction of a millimeter, which is insignificant at this point. Hashtag bonus number two. This involves one very important condition, and that is you just finished doing the carving and you haven't removed the workpiece from the snap maker yet. This is very important. Uh, let's assume that we look at the uh, 3D relief carving and we want to go deeper with some of the elements. We can still do that, and that's very simple. Let's go back to the graphic and use this particular tree as our uh, example that we're going to use. Uh, let's assume that we want to carve it a little bit deeper. If you follow the tip of creating everything into its own separate layer, all you have to do is hide the unnecessary layers. Change your scale and then save it as a separate file. Now we're going to the Snapmaker software. And the numbers that we need to remember are these, both the move numbers and one or both of the size numbers. Uh, right now we are in locked proportions, so if we change one, it will automatically adjust the others. But if you were in uh, unlocked proportions, then we need to remember all four of those numbers. Uh, so in any case, let's remove this image and add our tree zero image. and update the values and do a relief carving as well. So basically what we're telling the snap maker is do a carving of just this component. And because we haven't removed the workpiece from the snap maker yet, the point of origin is going to be exactly the same. And we don't have to worry about overlapping into any of the other um, components. So we click on the process. We do our target three millimeter depth, uh, density of 10. We generate the G code. Now let's turn on the snap maker and see what happens. So here we are at the snap maker. Uh, the G code is loaded into the USB drive. So now I'm just going to click on start. Select the USB and do the fire tree. And that is the little component that we are doing. So we are definitely ready. We click next. First, it has to go home.
and we select the option to go to the work origin. Because this was the last work piece that we did, the work origin is going to be exactly the same. And now it's time to hit the start button and see what happens. So the procedure finished, so let's take the trusted caliper and measure the new distance. The reading is 2.88, which is slightly off, but it's consistent with all the other ones. And then again, we are talking about a fraction of a millimeter. If you like this video, you know what to do. Like, share and subscribe. Also hit the notification bell to get notified of the next time I upload a video and also follow me on all social media channels.